Former President Bill Clinton joined Hillary Clinton on the campaign trail in New Hampshire, and he made a 30-minute speech for Hillary Clinton. Here's what he had to say. He states that Hillary understands what it takes to keep our country as safe as possible to stop big bad things from happening and make as many good things happen as possible. Now, we all know that Bill is a very talented and charismatic speaker, but if you're just reading this, it sounds like something Donald Trump would say, but uh, nonetheless, I digress. Here's what he also had to say. He says, quote, Every presidential election, people run, and believe it or not, this is kind of scary this year, but believe it or not, most everybody actually tries to do what they say they're going to do when they're running. They're telling you what they believe, so you gotta take them seriously. Yeah, take politicians seriously. Hmm, uh, I'll pass, but thanks. So, now of course, Bill Clinton is going to campaign for his wife. This isn't surprising, this is expected. Um, and if Bernie Sanders' wife was a politician, you can bet she would be campaigning for him as well. So, I mean, this isn't something that, you know, is surprising at all. Uh, and the reason why he does this is because uh, he's very popular. However, if you recall specifically what he did during his presidency... I don't think he would be that popular after all, and I don't think that Hillary Clinton would want to trot him out. So I'm going to tell you the specifics. So first and foremost, uh, he signed Republican welfare reform into law, and by welfare reform, I mean he gutted welfare. So basically, massive cuts, billions of dollars to welfare, uh, and furthermore, he made it more difficult for individuals to be qualified for welfare. So now what I mean by that is that if you're a college student, well, there's going to be a lot more requirements. If you're a mother, there's going to be a lot more requirements in order to be eligible for welfare. Now, this policy was detrimental across the board, especially to the poor but it disproportionately impacted African-American single mothers. So this policy is terrible, and he signed it into law willingly after it was blatantly Republican reform. Now, furthermore, let's not forget about Social Security. We all know that Bush, uh, in 2004, 2005, he wanted to partially privatize Social Security, but a lot of us forget the fact that Bill Clinton wanted to fully privatize Social Security. So what he did was he set up a commission, and it it was going on for about 18 months, so that way they can figure out how to implement this new reform to privatize Social Security. Now, if you privatize Social Security, you effectively kill it. You make it so that way people get way less benefits. This is what happened with retirement plans. People are now moving from pensions to 401k plans, and they're not getting enough to retire. Well, the problem is that he wanted to do this with Social Security as well. Now, thankfully, the Monica Lewinsky scandal had actually stopped this reform from going through because if you want to privatize something that's so popular, it's going to be an uphill political battle. And at that point, he just didn't have the political capital to take on such a big battle. So thankfully, that did not go through. Now, moving on, he facilitated the repeal of Glass-Steagall. So this is legislation put in place during the New Deal era that basically prevented banks from gambling with your money. But Bill Clinton said no. I think I want to allow them to gamble with your money. Now, this had serious repercussions. This inevitably led to the 2008 financial crash. So, this isn't very good, and we all know that Hillary Clinton does not support reinstalling Glass-Steagall. Now, furthermore, he signed NAFTA into law, and uh, this is a disastrous so-called free trade policy that allowed corporations to ship our jobs overseas. Now, we all know that Hillary Clinton is also pushing for free trade, the TPP. Well, I stand corrected, actually. She uh, she pushed for the TPP as Secretary of State, but now she's against it. But we all know where she stands on that in actuality. Now, also, Bill Clinton initiated the three strikes policy in order to be, quote, tough on crime. And he infamously stated at a State of the Union address that it should be not three strikes, but one strike, because that's how tough he wants to be on crime. Now, what happened? This led to a substantial increase in African-American and Latinos being thrown in jail. Now, in addition to that, uh, he fueled the growth of the private prison industry, which basically incentivized the lockup of Americans. And of course, who had to deal with this the most? African-Americans and Latinos. They were disproportionately targeted. And now we are now basically a prison state. I mean, we lock up more people 
than many other countries in the world, and it's just absolutely sad. Now, furthermore, he also ushered in a lot of homophobic policies. He was a pioneer when it comes to disenfranchising members of the LGBT community. Now, he signed DOMA into law, which basically made it so that way, uh, even if a state legalized marriage equality, well, the federal government would not recognize it. Now, effectively, that makes same-sex marriages not equal because there's a lot of benefits that come with, um, a lot of federal benefits, that is, that come with marriages. Uh, so we all know this was struck down by the Supreme Court because it is absolutely unconstitutional. And also, he signed Don't Ask, Don't Tell into law, which banned gays and lesbians from serving openly in the military. Now, what did this policy become? Over the years, it basically became a big gay witch hunt. So thankfully, Barack Obama facilitated the repeal of this horrible policy. Now, finally, when it comes to foreign policy, he was not too... I mean, he wasn't terrible, but I mean, he had one of the biggest blunders in history. So there was a Rwandan genocide going on. About 800,000 people were slaughtered within about two months, and Bill Clinton didn't do anything. Now, thankfully, a lot of these policies, such as this one, he states that, well, this in particular was one of his biggest regrets, but he also came out against a lot of his own policies because now we see the disastrous effects of it. Now, the same is true for Hillary Clinton. I mean, she was in favor of the Iraq War. Uh, she was in favor of the TPP, and she's starting to come out against her own policies because they're not good. Uh, now, with the TPP, we know that she's still in favor of it, but she's posturing. But anyways, the Clintons both are guilty of putting forth these types of policies and then coming out against it. Well, I want the candidate who's going to put forth a policy that's going to be correct the first time. I don't want you to go by trial and error. You're playing with our lives here. I want you to get it right on the first time. So now, none of this in general, all of Bill Clinton's policies should not theoretically matter because Hillary Clinton is her own person. But the problem is that it does matter because she actually endorsed a lot of these policies at one point or another. So you can't necessarily just brush off Bill Clinton's policies and say that was Bill, Hillary's her own person, and that's true. But again, she spoke out in favor of many of these policies. So I don't know why Bill Clinton is still popular. Uh, but the problem is that whenever you trot out Bill Clinton as this savior to the Democratic Party, he facilitated a lot of neocon policies. I mean, he wanted to deregulate. He wanted to be a corporatist Democrat, or he was a corporatist Democrat, just like Obama. So not really someone you want to bring out on your campaign if you are saying that you're a progressive, but I mean, it's her husband, so I'm not surprised by this. But anyways, Bill, not a very good president. The one thing that came out of his president, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's it. End of story. I mean, there may be other tidbits here and there, but I mean, there's so much bad things that happened during his presidency that, you know, uh, that just are unforgivable, in my opinion. Now, you can say that the economy was great. He left us with a surplus. But I mean, if you look into it, he had to cut a lot. I mean, cutting welfare reform and whatnot, or gutting welfare. This all came out of price, and that price is something that we had to pay for. <laughs>